First up, we're going to be talking about the argument that I hear all the time with GMOs, and that is follow the money. Now, this usually comes up when I provide a source or I provide a study or what have you about uh, GMOs and their safety and so forth. Um, they usually tell me, oh, well, why don't you follow the money? goes a little bit something like this. Yo, why don't you just, like, follow the money, yo? The man is paying for it. Now, that's just simply not true. Every reputable study will include something like this. Here is showing a study's conflict of interest. Now, in this particular case, this study acknowledges that there's a no conflict of interest and that the authors are responsible for the content. You'll also notice that they provide a link to show where the financial support for the manuscript came from. The argument, follow the money, is really just a red herring. It's distracting you from their main point and it really doesn't follow. So next up is labeling. Now this really is an, an anti-GMO myth per se, but it comes up from the same people saying that they want to know what's in their food or that um, they want labels on things that are GMO. Well, here's the problem. We've been genetically modifying plants for about 10,000 years, ever since the dawn of agriculture. Now, before you all get up in arms, I realize that we haven't been doing the types of GMOs that we've been doing the last 30 years, which is in a lab, and really in the last 20, making its way into the food supply. Um, but when it comes to genetically modifying a plant, there really isn't much of a difference. The only difference is that one takes much, much longer to do, that being artificial selection, which has been the longest known genetic manipulation. If you take a look at any fruit or food in the store, say like corn or say a banana, uh, if you look at their wild counterparts, they look nothing like what you see in the store. And that's because of artificial selection, which we've been doing forever. So there really isn't much to it. Now, when people want labeling, I fail to understand what they want labeled. Um, the, the information that you would have to put on there would be just like completely incomprehensible to most people. Um, you could put the gene sequence, you could put the number of chromosomes, you could put all sorts of stuff on there, but it's not going to be useful information. Here's an example. Here's a picture of all the ingredients of what's in a banana. How many of those things do you know? How many of those things do you understand? How many of those things there are things that you can comprehend? Now I realize not everyone's a chemist, and I'm not a scientist myself, but when you see the ingredients of a banana, it kind of makes you wonder whether or not the labeling of GMO foods would be even remotely useful. Also, take a look at this picture of Himalayan salt. You'll notice that it has a GMO certified label on it. Here's the deal. Salt, sodium chloride, NaCl, is not something you can genetically ma manipulate because there's no genetics in salt. So this is another one of those instances where labeling things non-GMO is either useless or silly. Oh my god, but like Monsanto, like they're evil. Like don't you know that they're like so bad? Like Monsanto, yo. Oh yes, Monsanto. I love this. Skeptic Blog has a post called Argumentum Ad Monsantium, which is really funny and it's also quite informative, so I suggest checking it out in the description box below. But in short, it's explaining how um, the Monsanto argument has become its own fallacy, which is really just a combination of a few fallacies, and I'll name them off. It poisons the well. It's a non sequitur. It can be used as an ad hominem. And just like with follow the money, it's a red herring. So I'm not going to go into each of those individually. You can look up those fallacies yourself. The real problem people have with Monsanto is their business practices. And their business practices have no bearing on the validity of the science being done by their scientists. Yes, they, they may be really awful business people. They very well may be a really evil company, but that doesn't change the validity of the science. 
all for profit. Well, this will be short because, well, we live in a capitalistic society. Of course, almost everything is done for profit. The FDA is checking on these foods constantly. They have regulations and guidelines that I'm going to link in the description bar below. And I'm sorry to say that while we live in a capitalistic society, everything is for profit. So if you're going to condemn them for being for profit, you have to condemn everything for being for profit, which is just unbelievable nonsense. Yeah, you know, but non-GMOs are healthier because they don't have as many chemicals and toxins. Oh, this is a fun one. GMOs do not contain toxins. They don't contain extra chemicals. All a GMO is, is a genetically modified organism, which means that they are modifying the DNA. Now, they'll say things like... It contains, like, other animals' DNA? Like, that's Frankenfood. Okay, got me there. Yeah, some GMO foods do contain the genes of, say, cold water fish or jellyfish. What they fail to mention is the purpose for these genes. These genes are put in these foods so they can withstand extreme cold or resist frost, and that extends the growing season. The actual gene itself is fine. It's just a protein. There's nothing in there that's going to make you sick. There's nothing in there that's going to harm you or harm the plant or harm wildlife. It's just going to extend the growing season so you can have more food and fresh fruit for longer in the year. The last thing I'll say about the nutritional value of GMOs is the case study of grape nuts. Here we see a picture of grape nuts before and after being certified GMO. There's a couple things to point out. First, the non-GMO version of grape nuts weighs less. You're actually getting less food. Second, you'll notice that it is actually less nutritious in two very important ways. Vitamin A is lower and the vitamin B is lower. Riboflavin, also known as vitamin B12, is important for body growth and it also helps the production of red blood cells. Vitamin A is important because it helps support many aspects of vision. So the fact that the non-GMO grape nuts has less of this tells me that it's less nutritious. You can see more about vitamin A and vitamin B in the source links below from the National Institutes of Health. GMOs are just like not safe. The science hasn't been done. Yeah, okay. The claim here is that there's no science that has been done. Unfortunately, there's been quite a bit of science done, as I've mentioned several times in the video. So fairly recently, I think in about 2012 or so, there was a study published that linked GMO corn to cancer in rats. Now this is something that anti-GMO people like to pass around a lot. It's similar to the anti-vax autism study in the following way. The GMO study that connected corn to rats was retracted. In the Journal of Nature, they mentioned why the study was retracted. I'm just going to read you the important bit of it. The study showed that there was no evidence of fraud or intentional misrepresentation of the data. The small number and type of animals used in the study mean that, quote, no definitive conclusions could be reached. Also, the known high incidence of tumors in the strain of rat cannot be excluded as the cause of higher mortality and incidence observed in the treated groups. What this means is that the GMO corn not only can't be pinned as the cause of their tumors, this particular species of rat already has a high incidence and a high likelihood of getting these tumors. Also, there was a study done by some Italian scientists where they took 1,783 studies and they summarized them. And all these studies were looking at the safety of GMOs in, in different significant ways. Um, about 68% of them were environmental, the rest of them were on the health and how it affects um, human health. These studies are expected to be merged into a public database known as the GENERA, Genetic Engineering Risk Atlas, being built by BioFortified, an independent nonprofit website. Officially launched in 2012, GENERA includes peer-reviewed journal articles from different aspects of GM research, including basic genetics, feeding studies, environmental impact, and nutritional impact. GENERA has more than 650 studies listed so far, 
many of which show up in the new database. When merged, there should be well over 2,000 GMO-related studies, a sizable percentage, as many as 1,000, that have been independently executed by independent scientists. That's a huge sample of studies, and when you combine all the sample sizes of those studies, the conclusions that they reach are nothing less than definitive. GMOs are healthy. They're fine. Eat them. They are going to probably be responsible for ending hunger around the world. In fact, the late Norman Borlaug is said to have saved a billion people. A billion people using genetically modified organisms, genetically modified crops in several parts of the world. Genetically modified foods cause allergies. People who have allergies should be concerned about them. In the study I mentioned earlier done by the Italian scientists, the meta study that takes into account 1,783 different studies about the safety of GMOs, one of the things I looked at was toxins and allergies. As you can see here, it says nothing short of there is no evidence at all to support the notion that GMOs are a risk for those with allergies. There's nothing about GMOs or the way that GMOs are produced that's going to make something more allergenic. If you're allergic to a particular food, you're allergic, and that's it. There's nothing they can do to make it more allergic unless they were to change the plant's histamine levels or other allergenic properties. But when they're changing the genetics of a food, they're not doing that at all. Thanks everyone, it was really fun making this video. If you like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it everywhere, and I'll see you next time. Bye!